Crazy weather swings are on the way as we go through the rest of this weekend and into next week. Some spots getting cooler than average temperature-wise, other areas warmer, and we're also going to see differences to the precipitation pattern. Some new areas wet, other areas really drying out for this time of the year. I've got the details on everything you need to know for your area right here. One Nation Weather. Thank you for taking time out of your day to tune into my video. As always, these awesome weather model maps that I use throughout my intros to my videos, throughout just the entirety of my videos, they are from WeatherBell. Check out the free trial link below in the description if you want access to them as well. Also, if you're new to the channel, I'm at 5,130 subscribers. The next goal is 6,000. Consider hitting that button down below for consistent, accurate, and educational updates delivered right to you in the future. And here we go, getting into this one with our temperature anomalies from the European model as we go into the week ahead. I've been using these temperature anomaly graphics in the last few videos to start off because I think they do a great job of showing us where fronts are going to be day by day, and fronts indicate where we're going to be seeing precipitation. In this case, there's not going to be a lot going on Monday precipitation-wise, but there's going to be a lot of 5 to 10 degree below average temperatures from Texas all the way on up there to Maine, northwest to southeast wind flow, and that means that we're going to be seeing that cooler air moving on in. The only exception for some rain in the east, we could still be watching some isolated storms from this front in some parts of the southeast and Gulf Coast regions. Then as we go on out here into the western U.S., you can see through Nevada, up into Idaho and Montana, up from Utah into Wyoming and the Dakotas, we're going to be watching this 10 to 15 degree above average temperature overall zone expanding, and that's probably going to continue to expand throughout this week across that general region. Ridging is going to be the trend over there. Things are going to be a lot more variable into the eastern U.S., and you can really see a lot of those oranges, reds, and then those blues and greens shifting around. Here's how this can be dissected as we go into our Thursday, September 5th, into the afternoon and evening hours. That first front of the week that had things cooler than average for a lot of the central and eastern U.S. Monday, it will be still lingering around near the Gulf Coast with a lot of precip, so that's going to help keep things cooler than average. A lot of rain means a lot of below average temperatures in many cases. In addition to that, overall, we're just going to see that northerly wind flow. So anywhere from Texas over to around the mid-Atlantic region, we could be seeing a below average temperatures continuing through at least late week from that front. Then you've got this new area that I'm circling back on up here into the north central plains and in the midwest great lakes there's a little bit of warm air getting funneled between that southern cool air and this northern cool air that is your cold front and our next one that's going to traverse the northern part of the country but eventually the jet stream dig that comes with this late next weekend into next week that's going to even impact probably the southeastern u.s with more cool air a lot of the eastern half of the country cooling down once again so let's talk about that same week of weather but looking at the precipitation side of things and of course it all starts out with that near-term front as we close out this weekend and head into the start of the week this is as we go into our Sunday, September 1st. Yep, starting off the new month, the second day of a long weekend for many folks here, and we're going to be watching showers and storms from Texas up to the mid-Atlantic region. A few of these could be on that stronger to severe side, especially as you get closer to jet stream energy up there in parts of Tennessee, North Carolina, into Virginia, Maryland, we've got Delaware, New Jersey, even around the New York City region up there. We could see some isolated severe weather out of any storms late Sunday. That front's going to clear to the southeast by the time we go towards our Monday, and this is exactly what I was talking about. Cooler is going to be moving in anywhere behind where you see this precipitation, but we will have a little bit of rain still lingering around close to the Florida coast, as well as back on over there towards the Texas and Louisiana coast. There's some areas of low pressure kind of spawning along that front in these general areas, and this overall activity is just going to linger around for a lot of this week. In fact, here we go into our Tuesday, September 3rd. This is already the day number two or three-ish of some precipitation around this general zone. The Gulf Coast states, if you live in these states, I guarantee you most of this week there's going to be at least some chance of rain around 40, 50 plus percent. You can see Texas, you're in on that mix and even parts of west texas will get wet at times this week definitely needing the rain there i'll point out the exact totals in just a little bit but moving on this particular model shows some of that rainfall pushing northward back on that same boundary this is that same one that's keeping the southeastern u.s cooler all week long we're going to see that precipitation begin to lift back into some other areas and probably get pulled towards this other front and this stronger one up here even though it doesn't have as much precipitation with it from kansas all the way on up there to parts of the northern upper peninsula of michigan this front is potent it's a associated with strong jet stream energy. It's going to bring a strong cold blast. It's probably going to pull all that moisture up towards it whenever that happens, and that could be late next week into the start of the upcoming weekend. Now I'm about to discuss in detail that rainfall that's going to impact a lot of the Gulf Coast states and the South Central U.S. through this week. If you're not interested in that specific area of the country, please use the timestamps down in the description to get to the next part that's kind of valid for you. Anyway, here as we go with our 24-hour precipitation increments through this week ahead, you can see going from Monday morning through our Tuesday morning, this 24-hour window having a pretty heavy chance of rainfall, particularly in West Central Texas. This area has not seen a lot of rain in the last month, plus we're definitely going to be making up for it with a possible flooding event of two to four inches plus in a quick period of time during that window. Please be ready if you're west of the Dallas area and south of the Texas Panhandle. That's where that best chance of flooding will be. Heading out of Monday into our Tuesday, we'll probably see some of the lingering effects of this flooding event, maybe even beyond that in some of those locations. 
Other than that, we're not going to be watching a widespread flooding because of how disorganized this rainfall looks to be this week. Nonetheless, from Tuesday afternoon through our Wednesday afternoon, you can see these greens and blues indicating half an inch, an inch of rain in many communities. Those locally higher amounts, one to three inches, could bring out some isolated flooding reports. Just watch the rain this week if you live in any affected areas. Of course, these are going to be some of the cooler areas, and I'll show you how that cool air is going to move into the south in just a moment. But let's start with the whole country's view for our Sunday, September 1st of 2024. I keep trying to say August. I probably will end some point in this video, so if I've said August, I apologize. We're going into September here. And the biggest anomaly as we start the month is going to be out there in the far northwestern U.S. You can see parts of Washington State into Oregon. We've got Idaho and west central Montana. 10 to 15 degrees at least above average for this time of the year. Pretty variable elsewhere with those fr that first front kind of moving on through. You can really see the effect of that first front by the time we go into our Tuesday the 3rd. Temperatures below average in a lot of Texas and Oklahoma, below average in Missouri, Illinois especially, and then even more so up there in parts of Pennsylvania and in New York State. We've got New Jersey down to Maryland, parts of Virginia and North Carolina cooling down. Temperatures 10 to 15 degrees below average there while it's warmer back up to the north central plains. And then by Thursday, here's that day where we're going to begin to notice that transition there's that old front lingering around, cooler air with some showers and thunderstorms closer to the Gulf Coast. We've got a little strip of warmer air through some parts of the central, north central, and northeastern U.S., and then you already start to notice some of those 5 degree below average temperatures moving into the Dakotas and Minnesota. That is the precursor to how strong that next cold blast will be moving through the central United States. So I'll have all the details again on that little part of the forecast if you skip to around the 10 minute mark. But let's talk about the near term, the next four to five days of those variable temperatures that I was just showing you with my anomaly graphics. Starting with our Sunday, September 1st, looking at those morning lows, not too much crazy going on, some 50s in the north, 70s in the south. Overall, that's the trend. By the time we go into our Sunday afternoon, here's that area that's going to be warmer than average for this time of the year, overall anyway. Either you're ahead of the front if you're in the southeast U.S. or if you're in the western U.S. you're just getting into that ridging that you'll be dealing with for a lot of the week. In either case, you're looking at lots of 90s in those valley locations on the west, a good deal of 80s and 90s down here across the Gulf Coast and southeast states of the U.S. as well. So just a broad zone of warmer than average conditions in a general sense and then up here in the north central U.S. into parts of the Great Lakes, 70s for high Sunday. And then as we go into our Monday morning, that area is where I want to circle because look at these numbers, not a lot of 50s in this circled area. In fact, it's going to be a lot of 40s up there, the far interior northeast into parts of northern Ohio, northern Indiana, even just northwest of Chicago, Illinois, some of those far northwestern Illinois suburbs in the 49 degree range into Wisconsin, especially uh, the upper peninsula of Michigan, that far north, we could be closer to 40 to even as low as 35 degrees. That is some crazy cool. We could get even cooler, dare I say, at the end of that week of this week with that second front. Here we go to our Monday afternoon. Notice these conditions. If you're south of this line, you're going to be in those 80s and 90s overall. Uh, some parts of the Central Plains dealing with those numbers. Meanwhile, up here into Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, you know, this is welcome relief from the heat in many of these communities after a very hot week of temperatures. Mid and upper 70s, and that's going to feel pretty nice, especially for those of you who love fall. Tuesday morning, those coolest anomalies for those morning temperatures are going to be felt from Michigan over to Maine. Some parts of even places like New York City, Boston, will definitely be trying to push down into the 50s to near the 40s there. Tuesday afternoon, our highs, look at the contrast here. We've got 70s over there in eastern Minnesota, but in the far western parts, upper 80s moving into the 90s as you go into the Dakotas with a little plate of warmth there. Still warmer than average overall in some parts of particularly Louisiana, Mississippi, into Alabama, you see some of those mid and even upper 90s, especially with the feels like temperatures that we're going to have there. Here we go towards our Wednesday. I'm just skipping over the morning lows and let's go to the afternoon highs. A widespread day of low to mid 80s up here. We're starting to fill the day with more of those 80s, even back on up here into the Midwest, into the Ohio Valley. This is going to begin us warming back up ahead of that next front. Remember, that second front's going to get going, particularly into our Thursday, going into our Friday across this area. And you're going to really notice the difference coming through the Dakotas as early as our Thursday. Thursday morning up there into Montana, parts of North Dakota, already down into the 40s to near 50. We're going to start to see temperatures out ahead of it warm up, though, as I was mentioning. Into Nebraska, Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky. Man, that was a lot of states to list quickly, but we're going to be near 60 degrees, a little bit warmer than we've been up there into our Wednesday morning. And then look at the contrast. There's that front Thursday afternoon. We've got 60s and 70s into the, into the Dakotas, Minnesota, and northwestern Wisconsin behind this. 80s out ahead of it Thursday, and we could certainly see at least a few storms come out of this, if not at least some gusty winds along that boundary. That is late on Thursday, so be ready for that in those areas. And then as we go out of Thursday into Friday, we'll continue to watch those cooler afternoon highs and cooler morning lows shifting to the southeast. And by the time we go to our Saturday, 
uh, September 7th through our September 8th, which is our Sunday cooler than average air, is going to be filling a lot of the eastern U.S. from the Dakotas down to Texas, all the way over to Maine, back down to the Carolinas, Georgia, and Florida. Areas in between in particular, we're going to be cooler than average by at least 5 degrees, closer to 10 to 15 degrees up there into the Midwest. Warmer than average as that ridging just continues for another week in the West. It has not been as variable in the West as it has been in the East, that is for sure. It is just remaining in that ridging-like pattern. Let me show you how that front sets up as we go through the end of next week. Here we go into our Tuesday. I'm using these ensemble members because they really pinpoint where precipitation is going to be in a more of an average out state. You can see from Montana all the way over here to Minnesota, we could at least see a few showers and thunderstorms indicated by those grays of uncertainty heading out of our Wednesday, September 4th, into our September 5th, our Thursday. These grays overall indicate that most rain that falls will probably not be very heavy. It will be very short-lived, but we could at least see a few heavier thunderstorms and isolated severe weather as that moves through quickly during that time period. Heading into our late Thursday into our early Friday, showers and storms traversing some parts of the upper Midwest down into the central plains. And then look at that. We're overall going to see that moisture from near the Gulf Coast fuse with this system. That means an active start to the weekend, possibly, if it moves at this overall rate with those darker grays and greens indicating the heavier rain coming out of our Friday the 6th into our Saturday the 7th. Some of that cooler air that we get into the Great Lakes, Midwest Ohio Valley, we, it could come with some wraparound flow around the system and some rain showers as we kick off the next weekend time frame. So again, this is still a long way out and there's going to be some new details that I uncover. But what I can tell you, in addition to the fact that it could remain active in some parts of the eastern half of the country around the system into next weekend, we're also going to be seeing that cooler air move on in. And here is that set in stone already moving on in on these ensemble members showing at least confidence for 10 degree below average conditions in many parts of the upper midwest and into the great lakes again this is around sunday the 8th so sometime next week and expect cooler air at the minimum in the midwest other areas will almost certainly get included with time so if you live here in a lot of the eastern half of the country expect to get another cool down and i'll be right here with you at one nation weather to cover all the highs and lows literally of those temperatures that come with that if you want more consistent accurate and educational forecast updates in the future remember to hit that subscribe button down below thank you for bearing with me through this video hit that subscribe button remember that button subscribe 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 hit the like button too i'll see you in the next one one nation weather